Immortals having the blue side for this pick ban phase. Dino Riders having the red. Ban phase is going to start momentarily. What are you seeing? Any differences? Any common trends? Any outliers potentially, Sweejay? Yeah, Yikes plays like a really solid Zill in jungle. So I feel like that's something that Immortals needs to watch out for. Beast has some really good rotation. Actually, if you look at Wednesday, the reason why they were so dominant against their competition, uh, Gloria Awaits Us, which is a back and forth game, by the way, was because of the rotation that Beast and and Yikes did. They were able to gank the side lanes together. And as a result, because they got those ganks on side lane, they got the early game lead and punished the dragon side of the map. So the key is like who, which team is going to win the dragon side of the map and win that lane because it's going to dictate who's going to get that Abyssal Dragon. And it's so interesting you talk about early game rotations because that's something Immortals can accelerate that. And notice I put that as sort of a bit of a caveat there because sometimes Immortals, it just seems they just choose not to do that and they try and play more conservative and they just said this is a game we're playing more conservative and it's like a completely different play style but when immortals does decide they want to play aggressive that's usually when we have they have the most success that's when the quick knack comes out that's when you see the the craziness KZ fox is <laughs> going off he's getting all up in your business and uh and that's the immortals we need to see in this situation that's the difficulty Ooh. of the situation is oh, interesting ban a roll of the dice which immortals are we going to see right now it's looking as if we have an efficient immortals Banning away Ryoma and Max, followed by Dino Riders, Teamy, and the Murad with the final blue yeah, side. Yeah, that's band a being really Liliana. interesting ban there. Murad being banned means is that mean Immortals plays Murad really well and they don't want to give it over because that ban came out really fast, really instant. And I'm really curious to why that's the case. And then Violet, they're targeting actually KZ Fox. They don't want to give away these S tier heroes because Murad is S tier in the right hands because he's so good when you know how to play him. So I at least Superman open. Superman is open. Xenio is open. This is an interesting draft that I really like so far. Leave up the OPs. I mean, it's the classic. I mean, you know you're going to get one. You're going to get, I mean, of course, Immortals is going to first pick that Superman, but in return, and Xenio is going to be there. Wow. We've the seen Alice. the Alice counterpick to Superman play out in favorable and non-favorable situations. It looks to be a finite uh, strategy coming out of Dino Riders. We saw this in the quarterfinals outside of game number one where they find themselves at a loss. Game two and three where they came back and got themselves the victory. It was through that adaptation in the draft phase. Xenial and Alice could do just that with a L'Oreal as well as a Lubu for the Immortals. Three extremely powerful heroes already on their roster. I mean, we saw the Alice Zenio combo come out earlier. The ability to just shut down all the shields, the damage reduction, the heals, everything coming in there. We know how powerful that can be. You add the big stun, the, the AoE damage that you're going to get from Two and, and uh, Wonder Woman. I mean, I like what Dino Riders is bringing out, but Immortals, it's tried and true. You can't go wrong. The meta is strong here. There's a reason we see these heroes coming out, and with the Chagnar as well allowing the Lindas to have a safer game. I mean, KZ Fox, he's going to have an easier time. Yeah, I like that. You want to play ADC into an Alice because dive comp would just not work against a Xenio, a Wonder Woman, a Tulin. This is ADC versus ADC. So this, it's going to come down to how the supports are going to cancel and counter each other in these plays. But Superman is the tank initiator on the side of Immortals. So he's going to build extremely tanky. Then you have a Lubu as well, and you have a L'Oreal and a Morin, or sorry, a Lindus that can come from behind. And a Chognar, not really as big as a tank, but he does offer a ton of slows and a good amount of anti-CC. He's the he's the utility there for that draft as well. And, and I feel like it's a fairly well-rounded composition, but I also feel like Dino Riders brought it something fairly well-rounded yeah. as well. So I don't dislike either draft. I think both have their plus and minuses. I think they're both going for relatively similar ideas. I feel like there's a little bit maybe more sustainability on the side of Dino Riders, but more just raw damage output potential coming in for the side of Immortals. It's just who can execute it better. I think this is really just a battle of skill. I don't think either team outright won this draft. I don't think so either. I think execution is going to be extremely important. I'm looking at between the two minutes and the four minutes marks. You're going to have counter junglings within the first 60 seconds. We've seen it in every game. It's obviously a common trend within everyone as Immortals are ahead 67 to 33. But we're going to have to see who wins the earlier stages of this game as we are here for our second semifinal. Game number one between Immortals and Dino Riders. The winner of this series will play Allegiance in the finals for week number three. Sweejay and Virum, it's your call. Let's get into it. Our second semi-final match up here. And Immortals, they need to come out swinging here in game number one. And they're looking to do exactly that. Oh, man, that initial push from Superman here. If they can get in Dino Rider's head, 
from the start of this, they like, because they know they're going up a jug, as you said, a juggernaut in Immortals. If they can use that to their advantage, if they can mind game, Dino Riders will beat themselves. Yeah, exactly. The key is Bobo. His Superman is such a beast. And X Tears, he is known to play this Lubu hero. It's one of his best heroes, actually. So the side leaners is going to look really aggressive. Look at this rotation from Superman. Bobos are really coming down here. They are probably going to potentially make a contest and get the kill on mid here. And they do. Really nice play by KZ Fox and. 80s hero in the mid lane. They're slowing down the farm of the side of the Dino Riders while getting picks in the mid, while going even in the bottom. Immortals firing on all cylinders, getting victories across the battlefield right now as they are just going to reset, split, get soaked, get these kills, get the gold. I mean, Immortals... Look at this. this they're, are, they're just playing this game, and the vision that the Lindus is offering is well, they're going to try and snipe this out. The red buff is, I believe, going to go the way of Immortals during this as well. Yes, it is actually KZ Fox mixed it up as well, but it's going to be ALGBs going in there with the Malleys as well, trying to chase down KZ Fox. There's this on the ball. Sunshine is there. But no, they can't quite get the last auto that they needed. So that was Lindis escaping with an HP, a scrap of health. And now Bobo is going to re-engage the side. And Dino Riders getting very low. Yikes is here as well with the sun coming in. Oh. And that is Bobo stepping too Justice far for forward, saving the carry, though, and getting great value. Yeah, I mean, the way that they wasted the side of Dino Riders' time, Bobo just posturing his Superman, making them drop the red buff, and then, then recontesting. However, they were kind of low, and they still rushed for it. And now, yeah. really, decisive call by Dino Riders to get this, this Spirit Sentinel here, and that's going to put them right back into the gold and, and minimize that deficit. And right now, with X tiers able to win his silent, he can then rotate now to push for Dragon. That's actually huge. He forced Wonder Woman flatly out of lane, just straight won that, basically full HP. And X tiers we know how strong he is on that Labu. We know how strong he is in that side lane. And it looks like now the Dino Riders are posturing around this Dragon, but they're just a little bit scared to make anything huge happen. Immortals are totally content to let this Lindus just farm all the while. They are feeling very comfortable here in the early game because, as I said, they are looking super solid. Already up 700 gold. Doesn't sound like that much, but it's the mental victories they've been having as well that are huge. Yeah, Lindis is ahead right now. Level 5 before the Morin. Still level 4 there. This is a huge advantage that they need to take with Lindis being ahead. They need to poke using her passive. And let's see how KZ Fox is going to do this with Lindis here because they are setting up to win the Dragon side of the map right now. They are setting up to do just that as Dino Riders are also looking to posture, but they will have that Zenio Beast is going to be a factor here. His ability to come in from anywhere on the map and get that additional value as shows the crew are going to look to go in here. The Dragon is, is going to be picked up by the side of KZ Fox and Immortals. No snipe going out the way of Dino Riders. But no big overcommittal on either side. Just a bit of back and forth there. But again, Dino Riders, they don't want to give up stupid, wow. games, stupid deaths, and they don't want to give up that dragon. Wow, you're right. The damage coming from Superman already terrifying. Yeah, look at that. Jumping over the wall. And look at this. They're hitting the tower now. They could potentially kill one of them, but she has to use her ultimate defensively. Brace this mission come out. And look at the pull there. X tier is getting another, another tower shot, almost falling there. That was so close using that. Using that uh, the lunge to get right out of there as well. The stallion charge securing his success there. In the top lane all the while, though, Immortals is keeping pressure in the jungle of the side of the Dino Riders. Yikes and crew, they're just they're playing a little bit scared right now, and for good reason. They're trying to babysit this Moron. They're trying to get him as farmed as they physically can, but Dino Riders, they're just not quite having the success because, I mean, you know Immortals is aware of that too, and they're going to want to shut that down as hard as they can. Yeah, and look at that. They're constantly... That's the, the, the other the Spirit Sentinel that they received. And Moros did get one Dragon, but because they're grabbing these Spirit Sentinels, they're, they're not falling that behind. But look at this three-man rotation there. The ultimate is used for that side of the tower, and, and Moros is going to go ahead and steal the side. And look at Bobo. He sacrificed himself to clear the wave, but protects the tower. But Immortals is able to get the blue buff and maybe hopefully make a playoff here. Getting value elsewhere on the map. Normally you think, wow, he just he just went in there 1v3. But there was a game plan in mind, and now we see the creep cutting coming in, the proxying coming in now from Dino Riders. They're gonna try and steal this blue buff as well. So they're gonna set themselves up to be in a pretty good position. And that's the kind of heads up play. Again, an up and coming squad is Dino Riders. They have the mechanical prowess, they have the decision making there. And as you see, as you see it right there coming out, they know when to make the big plays as well. Able to escape is Wonder Woman, at least for now, but actually X Tears is here trying to get revenge for earlier as she almost lassoed him under the tower. But all the while, Dino Riders is trading in the top lane again. Good 
good to see it's coming out four from man them. rotation they're gonna get they're gonna get this tower potentially here there and wow that's me two towers traded for one which is huge for the side of Dino riders that was massive grabbing the kill onto superman once again there as well this is massive though as beast is gonna look to go in and engage there on the beginnings as well but we're gonna have the ult coming in from Oh, Beast is actually able to get himself out of that. That was massive. And now we see Hoon going in on ADC. It's going to take take down nicely done. There was X tier going to come out of the flank shows as well. Trying to back up for retreat the injured way for Hoon as well. The giant knockup though coming in for X tier, splitting this fight beautifully. And now it is ZK in a rough spot, trying to get over the wall and just walking headlong into it, walking headlong to his grave. Yeah, while KZ Fox just carried that fight, they're doing so much damage, getting three kills. And as a result, that completely turns the tide in favor of Immortals with that Lindis play. So really nice job there, counter engaging with with you know they almost killed the Zeno. He get, Beast gets out barely with Sliver as hell. You know 80s heroes falls, but KZ Fox just doing damage from behind, securing that lead for Immortals. Securing that lead indeed, and they just need to continue to get further and further ahead. Nice job there from Beast to get that red buff on, not letting that get sniped out here by X tiers. But now the towers are starting to fall. Dino Riders, despite a great push there on the on the Dark, Dark Slayer lane, they are able to you know find something because Immortals are then just took every tier one tower on the map right now. That's actually huge. Only up five kills to four though, and 3k gold lead. Tyler Riders not out of this yet by any means. Yeah, that just shows you one good team fight there because Downer Riders was Took, took tier two tower, they rotated to jungle as a four-man team, and then Immortals didn't engage. They actually killed Bobo, he got caught off, and they still lost that fight because they weren't able to kill the KZ Fox. And because Immortals, honestly, was much more decisive, they engaged on AOGO Beast immediately, and his team had, did not respond while he was getting poked out. And as a result, they won the damage trade, KZ Fox stayed alive, and just cleaned house with the rest of the team getting that triple kill. Cleaning house, indeed. That was exactly what we saw now. As both teams look to potentially posture here over this Dark Slayer Immortals. A bit of a party bush setup coming in there, waiting for a member of Dino Rider to show themselves here. And there we go, the nice ult coming in though, the race is submission, but we have Bubble in the back on the pushes there. Onto Hoon, isolating the target. Nicely done. The Zayo is going to try and come into the back of this though. And it is going to be beginnings caught out. Now the Chognar, not the easy target to lock down. Of course, now ADC Hero is here, forced to pop the injured. The rest of the team is posturing up though. And nice peel from Casey Fox and crew, forcing the damage there. And that is a nice stun. The sunshine is there, but it is X Tears on the flight. Going to look to go in, find the wow, knockup. There it is. Nice the, knock ice, up. the max range as they are able to secure the kill in the top lane onto the Alice. That's, oh, that Sentinel getting so much work. The spirit, uh, the scary ghost, let's call him that. Yeah, I love what X tier is there. He jumped twice, saved his third jump, looked for Morin, and then used a knockup to get him. And then Yikes used his impact rush to push back uh, the team uh, Immortals so that he would survive that fight. However, Superman Bobo was able to get the charge and fly right into Alice, killing her. The Man of Steel setting up that initial pick there in the top. The displacement, whoa. That was close. I mean, he took to the skies that exact per perfect moment, uh, faster than a speeding bullet, as it were, able to get himself out of that precarious situation. But of course, through all of this, Immortals is getting value everywhere on the battlefield. This is big here for them. They are never letting Dino Riders have a moment's peace. They're always on the other team's side of the map. They're always in the jungle. The invades are constant. The vision, they never feel safe. And this is huge. We talked about controlling momentum. Immortals is doing that beautifully. Yeah, look at beginnings. He is level 10 versus the Atlas. Only level nine now. Just turned level nine, actually. And what Dino Riders needs to do is they need to engage with Wonder Woman and the Atlas ultimate. You know, get the slow, get the Wonder Woman stun, and then just let more. Oh, wow, look at this trade. KZ Fox is just going ham on the Moore, dominating him. 1v3, and a Moore just can't respond. And then Immortals comes right behind and gets that kill, securing four kills on the side of Immortals. 80s hero with the flank coming in there. The wheel, the blink, the smite, the damage all set up from a beautiful play. The Lindus is like, I don't care if it's 1v4. I'm going to walk in and just straight click down your ADC. Not a care in the world. Yikes. Exactly that. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> That was crazy, that 1v1. Actually, 1v3 because the team wasn't responding. He was taking damage from KZ Fox, so but his guard. team didn't jump in there. KZ Fox just went ham with the attack speed, and you can see how Lindis is so powerful. Coming off the brushes like that, those two auto attacks that just pop out, they do so much burst damage. Look at his items. He has three tier three offensive items, along with Gilded Greaves, compared to Morin, who only has a Scorching Wind and literally just finished his second tier three item. Yeah, that's that's kind of crazy there. I, honestly, 
I just don't think they expected it. He, he's just walking into melee range, and they're literally, they're not believing what's right in front of them. They're just like, wait, what's happening right now? And now the push is coming in. 80 Zero, though, needs to back up, be able to try and get himself out of here. But they do have the Dark Slayer, but 80 Zero is there in front line with the Adjourn, he's going to fall on the back. This nice shot from Beast. Secure that takedown, but it is Bobo on the flank. Wow. And on the back. Beast is going to survive through all of that nicely done. His ults have been spot on. Yeah, KZ Fox's positioning is so awesome. He barely took any damage. And in his, look at his aggression. Oh my goodness. He's going to get the kill there. No. Wow, whoa, he endured. He endured. That oh. was insane. What a nice trap placement there. <laughs> That was just insane. The way KZ Fox is playing, Lindis, is out of this world. His positioning is perfect. He's staying back. He's not getting caught out. 80's hero did get caught out there and got killed. But look at the positioning there. Just going aggressive with his team and killing, getting kills from the back line. It is the most aggressive Lindis I have ever seen. I mean, she's kind of like, we, we see some heroes with fairly long attack range. Lindis is not that. It doesn't matter. I can be just outside of melee range. I am still just going to wreck your face. And that is two high ground towers fading into into the distance, fading to dust here. And now that high ground tower up in the Slayer side is so very low for the side of Dino Riders and Immortals. Despite, you know, the I'd say Dino Riders, they got a couple towers in the early game. They got a couple kills. They were looking okay. But once Immortals hit that mid, yeah, just, it's just 10k back. gold lead now. Yikes is definitely the word to use in this situation. And what they need to do now is honestly wait to get a pick, wait for Immortals to make a mistake out of position, over extension, whatever it is, that's the only way for them to get back in this fight. They have to combo that Wonder Woman stun with the Xenio Malice stun, with the Impact Barrage stun, high execution, and they got an Alice stun too. So honestly, they have everything they ha need in their kit to turn this fight around, but they got to execute it as a team. It looks like he's gonna get caught out there. Yikes is so low. Speaking of getting executed, that is exactly what is happening to Yikes as they're pushing out of the core. Casey Fox is just gonna auto attack that down, and with that, that is going to be GG. Hoping that the only way you win is when an opponent makes a mistake is not a great way to want to win a game. And with that, Immortal Stakes game number one. Just like that, Immortals secure themselves the game one victory against the Dino Riders. Your fun piece of statistics for the day. They won that game at 12 minutes, 25 seconds. Identical timestamp with Allegiance in their game one victory. Oh, wow. Both teams <laughs> winning at exactly 12.25. I talked about them having to fix their game times. They calculated that to a T, exemplifying the prowess that they have on the battlefield now. I'm looking around our set for the hidden Illuminati symbol, just like yeah. I try to look for it here. <laughs> the Illuminati. That's it. That's uh, the NA. It's the hidden in the Immortals bow tie. It's that's actually it. not an Immortals bow tie. There is no bias on the cast. Bias, <laughs> let me like say this right now. But it's a really nice bow tie to be it fair. It is. Thank nice you. color. Really like, yeah, it is. the pattern's really sick. I love it. But with that, Immortals secure themselves a win, heartily in control for the most of that game. The earlier stages. Dino Riders did put themselves up a fight. We're actually going to get ourselves to the first replay, which will show where Immortals got themselves back in it, and this is where things started to really yeah, snowball. Yeah, this is when Beast kind of overextended there, and he was focused immediately. It's 3v4, guys, keep in mind. And then Beast gets out of there, but look at the damage from KZ Fox there, just doing so much damage. And then Yikes is focusing 80s hero and Bay beginnings, but KZ Fox is left unscathed, and look at the Lunar Champions he pushes out. He gets, he eliminates the brush with Piercing Gauge, and then waits for Hoon and then puts a trap in the way of the direction that Hoon wants to run so he can't go anywhere and secures that kill and that's three kills goes from a gold you know gold was even to a 2k lead for Immortals. This was really Immortals securing that mid game for them and, and that's really again all they need to do is, is press one go button and they're back in this game and that's the difference I, I really you look at these top tier teams it's the ability to just go okay we need to take a fight okay let's find a fight and they just do it instantly. In that moment, they're able to find it. That's what I'm, we're really starting to see is separating these really good teams. Because again, when they say, what is, what do you need to do to get back in this game? <laughs> they need to take a fight. And you literally can in this game. Just go take a fight. Just go commit as a four-man rotation. Find an ADC in a jungle. Go have some fun. I mean, because at that point, you're going to lose anyway. So might as well try and win. Indeed, yeah. you take a look at the scoreboard that we have. Immortals, wow. Wow. clearly that Lindis, KZ Fox, we've seen him on the kill drop. We've seen him on the Crick Knack. But 15.7, he was involved in 87, will round up, 87% kill participation for his team. Every step of the way, 
KZ Fox was involved. Yeah, he was so... I mean, that one where he came from the bush and just basically 1v3 just killed Morin instantly. And then his team, Morin's team just couldn't react. KZ Fox was so decisive, so aggressive, that the team didn't even know what to do. They he literally they didn't just auto-attack him. insta-killed. Yeah, they didn't auto-attack. They didn't do anything. Morin just stood there and was, yikes, and died. I mean, it was crazy how that happened. Yeah. There's a Lindis run! Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's so funny because in that situation, like, she wouldn't be walking up unless there were three people right here, yeah. right? But then again, Morin had three tier three damage items. Morin didn't even have the, his, his uh, Fafnir's talent finished yet. So he didn't have the damage to really trade back, unfortunately. Scorching Wind, all those a great jungle item with attack speed, doesn't give that much damage. And so now, with game one in the books, Dino Riders are going to be facing extinction if they do not get themselves fixed up pretty quickly. They are now going to be on the blue side with Immortals taking up the red. Proactivity is the name of the game for the members of the Dino Riders. They have to come up with a strategy because if not, it is going to be back down the ladder. They will go. What's going to change? Yeah, although I have to give it to them. They did play well against Superman. Superman normally is able to snowball the early game, but... Bobo was not able to do that. Bobo did make some plays, but they also caught him out and got kills on the Superman. And getting two Tier 2 towers on the left side of the map, which is huge for Dino Riders to be able to do that against Bobo, who's probably one of the most dominant uh, laners, side laners in North America. So they have some light. They have some hope. If they can continue these ganks, these pushes to shut down the side lane and push their advantage, then they could come on top. Because honestly, that's where the fight happened, where they lost that poor rotation. Yes. <laughs> However, they need to also not lose stuff while they do that. Because one <laughs> more Immortals gets a three man push and they get value on that three man push. But those also those other two individuals are also getting value. And that's the difference. When Dino Riders commits to that four man rotation, they're losing every, yeah, they're winning one lane, but they're losing everywhere else. That's the difference maker. The Immortals efficiency with wave management, a concept that we don't get to highlight that often considering the fast paced mentality of Arena of Valor and what that creates. Being able to create a mega wave, being able to create an opportunity where if you're on one side of the map, if all four of those members are going to rotate, there is going to be a disaster on the other side if they're not careful. So Immortals showing yet again the level of efficiency that we've come to respect out of them in North America. Teamy as well as Superman are off the table. So no Superman, nothing that we're going to have to worry about for the yep. blue side here. There's probably going to be no Xenio. Maybe they may want to ban Ryoma. We'll see. Yep, Xenio is going to come out here. Liliana is going to be taken off the map easily. She's just super strong in the right hand. And I feel like after Liliana is going to be banned, you know, we have like Ryoma. We have um, Maybe Max. Max are, are always top priority banned. So the meta bans are pretty, uh, pretty standard so far. It's interesting how Kilgroth is no longer even played in NA. I mean, we saw him being banned and picked a lot last week, so it's really cool to see the meta shift. Murad was banned last time. Dino Riders banned Murad, so let's see if that's going to come out again, and if, if they don't ban him, is he going to be picked by the side of Immortals? That is the question. The other question is, am I going to break my chair here? I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to fall over right now. That's totally fine. Max is going to get banned out here, so you can hear that on the microphone, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> Max is going to get banned out. Again, Murad, that's the other question. Or is it going to be that Ryoma? We've seen fairly... Immortals tends to ban the same stuff. That's the thing. They have a great variety in picks, but they tend to ban the same stuff. And you talk about the kill growth. It's so fascinating to see how fast the meta evolves even week to week, it, day to day. Like oh, yeah. Wednesday versus you, Saturday, we have different there's stuff. There's a real ban. Yeah, you have you, to you keep up. You just predicted this entire ban phase. Yeah, I, 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 I do my Don't homework. Look, his head's big enough as it is. He doesn't need any more inflation. I know <laughs> I know. we have a uh, an air pump down here below the desk or, <laughs> where CJ before the games just gets a little oh, like goodness. pump going and it's just like, oh, uh -huh, I'm here, I'm Woo. ready. No, no more. However, <laughs> Wacky with inflatable that being, arm, man. Dun, dun, dun. All right, but with that being said, <laughs> Pick number one, you've got options on the table for Dino Riders. What we what are we think is Sweet uh, Oh, so may... masterful predictor one. They may go for Maganga. I'm just messing with you, Jump. Probably Wonder Woman is a really solid pick. Uh, we saw Wonder Woman carry so hard in uh, the AOG game when MTS played him. Wonder Woman is looking like the, the, the next best side laner to pick because she's so versatile and she has such so much in her kit. That's why she's she's such a good pick and she's banned and picked very, very often. But we also have really good side laners like Lubu. Maybe deny the Lubu from x because he's played it so well. Um, and I have a feeling with how the draft has played out with all the side laners prioritized, we're going to be able to see you know, the uh, Lubu, the Omens come out, um, potentially even a side lane Kilgroth could come out too. What's well, interesting, I was looking through the picks of, of Immortals over the last few weeks, 
And again, they play a whole bunch of different stuff, but one of the most consistent parts of their kit is Lubu. He is a, a constant <laughs> trend. He's one of the few heroes that pretty much always will show up in their drafts if they can get their hands on him. X tiers plays him time and time and time again. He's, He's the conqueror, really good. man. He's the conqueror. He's the conqueror. And with oh, that, and they're gonna take it away. I mean, are they listening to me right now and just following my draft here, both teams? No, there's. What's going on? There's de it's oh, definitely. Hey, 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 hey. I called that too, though. <laughs> you did. You did. You did. Now I expect. I expect it in the one-two here from Immortals. Yeah. So let's see if uh, Lumber Lumber wasn't picked. They're gonna take the Alice instead. Now they're gonna actually take the Alice away from Dino Riders because Dino Riders picked it, along with Lubu. What a surprise! Wow. Kel yeah. surprise. Oh. Uh. Yeah. That, that's what it's surprise. So they're gonna pick. They have to pick a Chognar to counter the Alice because we know Alice without a Chog is gonna be a nice win condition for Alice there because of that silence and that CC. So Chog is a very smart pick, and then they may go with a Tulin or L'Oreal here and secure a strong mid lane for Hoon. Oh, Kilgroth gets picked up. That's dangerous. It is dangerous. If they can get him even remotely fed, eh, the Kilgroth's tough to deal with. The problem is, is that he's all forward. The team has to be going forward, but luckily, Wonder Woman, Chog, like those are people who can go in and support him. He only knows he's only has one gear, which is going straight into the opposing team squad. And oh, I mean, Violet comes out. That's a way and to shut it down. He's really mobile. Kilgroth, his problem is he has only one gap closer. He can turn his ult on Gorlord, which makes him immune to CC, so he cannot be CC by Alice at all. And he can stick onto Vi, but Vi can just jump around with Lubu and L'Oreal that can dance around him. And look at this heavy dive comp. This is so risky because you're playing a heavy dive comp into an Alice, which just counters. If Kricknack goes in, they're just going to ult on top of him. And what are you going to do? And is the Maraud coming out or a Grack? I don't know. Wow. Wow. What is this draft? Two squishies here. Um. That's interesting. Violet. Yeah. Yeah, this is nuts. Yeah, this is a little. This is a little nutty. Uh, this is a little, little nutty. Little spine. Nutty. I mean, there's not too. a whole lot of beef. There's not a whole lot of beef. Yeah, on the Alice side, is 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 squishy. Lubu is probably going to be their main tank. Murad is squishy. What? Violet is squishy. <laughs> Lubu is going to be their main tank. He says with a straight face. <laughs> totally L normal. I don't, is squishy. I don't think that's how. This, I don't think that's wow. how he works. Yeah, no, he, he can't. Not. He can't be built. Tank. He can't. He can build he can. Yeah, okay. You can. So he's actually a pretty good tank because I it's do, how you build him. What I do see though is two teams. We we know North America loves to fight. We know that uh, on. I don't know. I don't know if it's just an unwritten like form of level of commandments that are in North America. If you play Arena Valor at a competitive level, rule number one is you must be aggressive. And, and then rule number two is you must know how to fight with that aggression. It's rule number one, as decreed by North America, you must be able to fight. <laughs> That's actually it. That's no, seriously, it was back in twenty. No, yeah. you didn't get that memo. No, no? I'm yeah. gonna. If you want to know what you think, please let me know what you think about this man. Go to Twitter, <laughs> hashtag Valor day. Series. I don't know what to say. I hope you know what to say. <laughs> I'm not even going to give him an opportunity because we're going to get into the match. It's going to be semifinal number two, game number two. Dino Riders are down one game to the Immortals. One win away are the Immortals from finding themselves in another rematch week three in a row against Allegiance. Let's go, boys. You know they want their revenge jump. You know they want to go up against Allegiance in that finals once more. If I'm the side of Immortals, I'm looking at Dino Riders as a stepping stone. It is Dino Riders. This is their opportunity to prove them wrong. And a nice initial pick onto AD Zero would be a great way to do that, but they need to make sure they don't overextend because x tiers has joined the fray. The knock wow. on the takedown is there. Way too far forward, Dino Riders. Ride your Dino into the sunset, please, because that is the first two kills. What a beautiful play by x tiers This guy, Lubu, is just a monster conquering the battlefield with the Conqueror, jumping twice, and you know it's how he timed the second jump, and in the third jump, he saved it. Got a three-man knockup. Holy moly, turns that fight around, gets the kill, and now Immortal is already almost a 1k gold lead, and they're stealing the red buff from Kricknack here, potentially. That could be huge that the fight is going in. Kricknack needs to try and deny this as best he can. Yikes is going in. The red buff is actually going to go oh, on no. 80's hero. Wow. Bye-bye, okay. Insect. Got squashed. Yeah, they, uh, the Immortals bringing out the can of raid to start game number two here uh, and taking it to the Roach in the bottom of the map here, and that is the red buff denied as well. This is... It's, everything's going Immortals right now. They, they managed to force X-Tiers back in the top lane. A small victory. The Sentinel's going to pop here as well. So Dino Riders is going to try and get that. That's something, I suppose. But they didn't even commit to it. Oh, that's not Yeah, good. and Bobo is actually on this Maraud. Bobo is playing a Maraud side lane? That's so 
interesting. I've never seen a Marat Silent. He's always, always in the jungle. So let's see how this is going to work out for him because that actually provides a, a, a state of weakness there, actually, because Silent Marad is a little weak early game until he gets level 4. Then he can do a lot of work proccing his passive, a rift of time onto the minions and just abusing his ultimate. I actually don't mind it because of how the rest of the team is playing this. There, there's been no opportunity to pressure him at all because they are putting so much other pressure onto the map with these rotations. Cricknack, like Yikes wants to go in and make some aggressive plays, but they're not letting him do that at all. Murad has been untouched, uncontested, and he's training just fine because Kilgroth, he's not super strong early either. Yeah, he is not super strong early. Kilgroth needs to get his items, once he gets a lot of attack speed, it synergizes so well with his Enraged Spear and his kit. And look at Immortals here. They're gonna make a play for this dragon. However, the side of Dino Riders know it's up, but they're gonna look for a gank instead on Marad. Yeah, the, the dragon is gonna go in here. But space created, dragon for one kill. Immortals is more than happy to take that trade as they are now up 1.2k gold difference. But ADC here is now joining the fray here, going into Chosen as well. There's four members down here committed in the bot lane, and there's the re-engage from Yikes as well, dropping in. Oh, oh no, the bot getting squashed once more. Look at the amount of healing and peeling going on for the side of Immortals. That is gonna be it. Not allowing, despite the fact that they're all pretty squishy, they are tanking through all this damage, no problem, forcing out the chaos protection. That is massive here. The drone drop getting zero value from that Cricknack there. Just not able to make it work here in this early yeah, game. Yeah, 80s here waited for Cricknack to jump in, and he ulted immediately. He casted L'Oreal Smite, put down the Judgment Circle, and then Cricknack went bye-bye and went to heaven. So really aggressive play there by 80s hero playing as L'Oreal. He's level 6. He's allowed to abuse his lead because of the level advantage and the item advantage. He already has Orb the Magi competed, completed, and this is going to result in a tower takedown by the side of Immortals on the dragon side of all sides. Oh man, completed it four minutes. That is just going to continue to get value all game long. I'm really excited for that to see how well they are able to just put that to good use here and rotating back, getting value across the board. And now that Murad has been able to stack up a bit here, level six in the opposing team's jungle, he is going to be such a constant threat. Immortals just putting on that pressure and all the while. AZ Fox is just farming up right now. I mean, Dino Rise is trying to do the same, but Immortals, that's a ticking time bomb right there. Yeah, who would have known that a side lane Murad would be successful here? That's something I've never seen so far, and I love how all these good teams are just changing up the meta. But of course, if any team knows how to fight against a Cricknack, it's going to be Immortals here. So that's why I thought it was a little risky to pick Cricknack into his composition, because Immortals, they know exactly how to play against Cricknack due to Casey Fox. Yeah, you know how to play a hero, you know how to play against a hero. And in the mid lane as well, a bit of a scuffle breaking out, but nothing too crazy. But of course, they know his power spikes. They know when he's strong. They know when he's weak. They know how to shut him down. They know when to go in. And AD's hero says, now is the time to go in, diving onto the tower, forcing that out. Oh, Zika needs to be careful there, though. As he fits going down, not really able to get much value. They're continuing the push here onto the mid lane. The tower taking so much damage to start things off. All the members of the side of Immortals are here. Maybe looking to re-engage the Dino Riders. They need to not overstep. This feels like a bait and a half if I was a betting man, as Immortals is trying to lure them back into the jungle. All the while, Bobo, he's so nimble, though. Good luck locking him down. <laughs> yeah, he used his ultimate to try to get the minion and said, actually, was not able to get that minion. He's going to return right back to the, the dragon lane. But look at the Slayer lane. That three-man rotation, four-man rotation. Wonder Woman is in trouble. They're going to lose that top tower at this point because the Siege minion is there, and they're going to take advantage of this push. And look at ZK just goes down so fast. He is dropping. I mean, nice little play there. Able to lasso himself on the beginnings there, getting off the bracelets, but just not able to survive there. The shield, not enough as the jungle. They're just trying to get it before it's stolen now on the side of the Dino Riders as the push continues here in the Slayer lane, looking to in invade there onto the Sage Golem. x tiers smartly not committing, though, but it is Yikes who might be one stepping too far forward. The tower is going to fall as well. What a solid push. All the while, Murad is just farming here, but so is Kilgroth. Dino Riders finding some solace in the fact that this Kilgroth is still farming throughout all this, but they are now down six kills to one and almost a 5k gold differential. Yeah, this is insane. Look at the Violet composition here, pushing down two towers so quickly. Tier one mid tower down, tier one uh, dragon side tower down, and a tier two tower down on the Slayer side. This is looking so good for Immortals. They have so much map dominance and map control now. It's going to be extremely hard for Downer Wire to get back in the game because 
Kricknack went behind, he can't be that assassin that jumps in there and tries to get killed because you have a L'Oreal, you have so much damage that can just counter engage against him, and Violet can just jump away. So this is really risky for Dino Riders to turn around a fight here. They need I, to catch someone off guard. The mobility of the side of Immortals, they have so they have the ability to just jump around and of course Veg with the trot. He's just gonna be all over the place throughout these fights, casting his abilities, being so nimble here as they're re-engaging there. Look at the damage, the turbulence, the slow, everything coming in the snipe from Casey Box, almost securing that kill. The red buff's gonna be going up there as DK is stepping forward as well. Nicely done, but the ult is coming in, lassoing in the back line, but it's Casey Fox turning this, dishing the damage in return. The ult wow. is coming in, one more auto there, it's gonna be. That is turbulence indeed, getting the back so fast already. The Mirad, such a threat in this fight. There's a reason he was banned in game number one, and now it is Casey Fox just gonna look to go in, get the poke, get the damage, free cutting as well. This is huge, they're pushing down this tower. Look at how much damage it is already taking. Sui J, Immortals are looking so dominant. Yeah, and Bobo on this Mirad, he was timing his hits, and look at that. His ultimates, his rift of time usage, perfect positioning, landing these ultimates, saving his hits on the minions until he gets four stacks. An enemy hero is within view, uh, a view, within sight, vision range, and then jumping in and just ulting and getting people low or getting kills. I mean, beautiful Mirage play by Bobo there. That's exactly how you want. You want to be patient with his passive rift, open up the rift of time and then use it to then poke. That's exactly what he's going to do here potentially. Nope, not, not, yeah, he does. There we go. That's exactly how you look at it, Mirage. You just can't, you can't touch him. It's crazy how good Murad is if he's played properly. The mechanics are impeccable here. I mean, both teams have the ability to get that solid, those, those individual plays, but the mechanics coming in from Immortals, they are just not misstepping right now. Eight kills to one, only one death, and that was uh, you know sacrifice to split push there. So, you know, a, a decision that was made coming in from the side of Immortals, and now they are looking towards the Dark Slayer. It is 80's hero caught out. He's using the smite. He's going to try and outplay the Jukes are there. This is against three heroes, though. This is a tough time. And they are going to be able to look with the damage. He's actually just one kill away now. 80's hero two. That was a four, man. The four came from 80's hero going off in the bottom lane. This <laughs> man is a monster. Do not give him L'Oreal. Oh, no. That it's a feels bad, man. The Dino Riders are getting torn apart. That was such an insane play. This is why Laking Loyal is a monster. Within the smite, he just stood within his circle, fought, blinked like crazy, got so much of the health regen, because again, they're on top of each other, and her passive, it explodes, it does AoE, it gives her 110 HP regeneration, and as a result, 80s here with the 1v4 in bottom lane was insane. And with that, Immortals is gonna take number two pure epic, undisputed domination. They will go on to your grand finals up against ALG. Immortals looking strong.